guys, we're going to keep it rolling. It's always great to have her here. Give it up for Danny Gomez. Make some noise for her. Give it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And give it up for Ted, who's been hosting this whole show so wonderfully. Ooh, yeah. Thank you all for staying and, you know, being out on a weeknight. You guys are wild. <laughs> yeah, you guys are fucking crazy. You're my kind of people. Uh, my name is Danny Gomez. I am a shy person, which directly contradicts the thing that I'm doing right now. To the talking part. <laughs> but I have no fear of public speaking. I'm fine with that. Me talking is great. It's the other people responding that I seem to struggle with. <laughs> because then it's like suddenly I'm real. <laughs> Before that, it's like this could all be an illusion, but as soon as you start talking back to me, it's like, oh shit, I'm actually saying things that people are hearing? Who the fuck do I think I am? <laughs> so this is great. And whenever people talk about being afraid of public speaking, I, I can't relate. Because I'm like, how, what, you mean like, getting attention in such a public format isn't what fuels your life? <laughs> what is that like? You can just like, walk around and have nobody pay attention to you when you're like a happy person. <laughs> Somebody needs to do like a scientific study on you. <laughs> I have a one particularly large issue that my shyness tends to exasperate and that's networking. Networking is the word that millennials hear all the time. We have to network for whatever job we're getting. Because people don't just want to hire you because you're accomplished or because you have the right job or gone to the right school. They want a person who they want to go get drinks with after work. They want a person who they want to follow on Instagram and don't want to unfollow you immediately because you're annoying as fuck. I'm not that person. If I'm ever, if any of you ever follow me on Instagram, Danny Gomez Comedy, and see me in a bar, like getting drinks after work, call my mom, call my boyfriend, call the police because somebody has hijacked my brain and turned me into a different person. It's just not who I am. But I'm trying, I'm trying to network more so that I can get ahead in the game of life. But it's not going great. I went to a networking event a few years ago and it kind of scarred me a bit. I was talking to this girl and I thought that was going really well. She was a really cool young lady. It seemed like she was going places that I wasn't currently going. And so I thought this is a great connection to have. I got her phone number, all that. And the next day I sent her the, the text that you have to send after you make a connection. And like, hey, it was great meeting you last night. And then she sent me the text back saying, Great meeting you. Do you know where I can find Coke? <laughs> wow. And I did it, and I felt like that looked really bad on my part. <laughs> <laughs> it would take me at least an afternoon, and that's not good work ethic. <laughs> so, I'm trying, you know, if you see me floundering in a public sphere talking to humans looking like this, it means I'm trying. <sighs> One thing that people in the general world tend to ask me a lot is, how do I get my hair this blonde? Which I think is rude. I could be Swedish. I could, <laughs> I could be a brown-eyed Swede, and you should treasure me. <laughs> it's not the case, though. The real answer is the answer that nobody wants to hear. I spend a lot of money. And whenever I tell people that, the general response back is like, oh, I really don't want to spend that much money. And then it's like, okay, well, you should probably just scalp me because that's the <laughs> only way you're getting this hair for free. <laughs> Scalping is a hard joke to pull off, I'll admit, because it does have a lot of like, cultural connotations. I might drop that one. You heard it here for the last time, aren't you? <laughs> Can we have a moment of silence for the scalping joke? <laughs> Good enough, thank you. <laughs> I just feel like in this YouTube and Pinterest culture, it's like nobody actually wants to develop a skill set 
or to go to people that have developed skill set because they feel like, oh, well, I have five articles that tell me how I can do it at home. It's like, it's not the same. It's like, in five years, I swear to God, there's going to be an article that's like, five ways to do chemo at home with four simple home cooked ingredients. <laughs> Chemo's also a tough one, you guys. Hey, I'm learning tonight. We're all on a learning journey. Yeah. I used to work at a sex store. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I did for a couple months, and I'm still doing material from it two years later. So, because <laughs> that's how enriching it was to my life. At this sex shop, we had boner pills to help people get boners. <laughs> they're all natural, they didn't have any pharmaceuticals in them, so supposedly they were safe to take, but then they also had a lot of unknown side effects that nobody had done any studies on. So I felt extremely unqualified to sell them, and I didn't know what the difference was from brand to brand. And it's like, okay, they, they give, the one, this one has a tiger on it. Did that beat to you inside? Tiger on it. So but I basically, whenever somebody had, like, maybe I want to get a boner pill, I would just give them the cheapest, like, just try it out. Just try out the cheapest one. You're like, what are you going to lose? Three bucks? So I sold a lot of people the cheapest boner pill that we had. And I later learned that the cheapest pill that we had didn't actually give people boners. It just made their load really big. <laughs> <laughs> so the sex is probably still going to suck, but now there's a risk of drowning. <laughs> And in times like these, I like to quote my favorite nerdy black 90s star. Did I do that? <laughs> oh, I've been Danny Gomez, and I'll continue to be Danny Gomez. <laughs> Thank you so much, Harry.